have uh, a uh, amphibian aircraft, which is basically an aircraft, obviously land on water and land. So um, being amphibian, we retract the undercarriage once we've taken off and we can choose any number of lakes, rivers or dams and land on it and we can enjoy the uh, greater a variety of places to go to. We're not stuck to runways and hard sandy beaches. So essentially I say our, uh, our um, options to uh, land and enjoy the Australian countryside are tenfold now. So if you think of every uh, water body that's probably more than two or three meet hundred metres long and deeper than knee deep, uh, half a metre deep, you can land there. Um, so essentially we've got uh, uh, probably hundreds if not thousands of places more to go and uh, we are not restricted to length or direction of runways. We've got 100, 360 runways on every lake and river, if you would. And how does it handle compared to a regular you know, three-axis uh, aircraft? Essentially exactly the same. Uh, I find the, I'm an instructor on this particular type of aircraft and I found that if you have a good basic skill level, um, a person with a pilot certificate or a GA licence will find that stepping in one of these aircraft is uh, not a great deal different to stepping into any other 3 axis land plane. It essentially is a land plane but we can ret retract the undercarriage and put it on the water. And now being an instructor then, so the, how's the transition time for a, a regular, you know, someone with a pilot certificate to go from landing on a, on a regular strip to landing on water? How many hours do you think it generally takes? Recently it's changed from um, uh, a couple of hours and competency based to now it's a minimum 10 hours and we ha uh, have 100 takeoffs and landings on the water. Uh, this is because on the water the aircraft does behave as I say like a bit like a sailing boat. Yep. Um, it is quite um, uh, free spirited on the water if you get a good crosswind it will weather cock into the wind much more than it'll ever do on the land. So if, with a bit of boating experience or power boating experience you'll find a lot easier to convert over but essentially landing on water is no different to landing on land except the wheels are retracted and it's a lot more fun. A bit more steering with the rudder I would imagine. Yes there is a little bit more steering in the rudder. There is in that 10 hours is um, uh, techniques to land on, not so much land on the water but to manoeuvre around on the water. So several hours are, are used up piloting the aircraft around on the water as a boat because on the water we are considered a boat by the various marine authorities and transport authorities. So the only other thing you need is a powerboat licence or a of recreational course. boat licence. Yeah, powerboat licence. And the, the different uh, options, uh, what are the variants that, that are available to people and, and then we should probably talk about what those costs are involved with, with getting the different... Sure. Um, the aircraft can be figured, configured from the factory for completely analogue instruments, um, what we call steam gauge instruments if you would, mm -hmm. right through to the Dynon glass cockpit with the autopilot and variable uh, in-flight adjustable propeller. So from a very simple basic aircraft which we just get out there and have fun with to uh, an advanced aircraft you can take into controlled airspace and land at any airport you want in Australia um, if you have the um, GA licence. Um, Heron Island on the Great Barrier Reef and spent a few days uh, scuba diving off the Great Barrier Reef with the aircraft sitting at anchor through the Lake Air and Cooper Creek, fishing off Cooper Creek down to uh, the, uh, the wilderness areas of um, Tasmania and flying up and down the Gordon River and landing on the Gordon River. So it really is about the lifestyle, you know, it's taking that, you know, your pilot certificate to that next step and really enjoying it. Absolutely, it, it, it's all about um, taking the aviation lifestyle and expanding it into um, a whole new world. Okay, so some quick uh, fast specs, uh, stall speed? Uh, 38 knots. 38 knots. Uh, cruise speed? Uh, well, cruise speed, variable pitch prop, we can get up to 112 knots. Generally, we uh, say that 105 knots is what you'll get with the aircraft fully loaded up. Um, a 600 kilo maximum takeoff weight that will allow you 20 kilos of baggage, full fuel, and 280 kilo pilots to be loaded in and be at the 600 kilo weight limitation. And um, if you have a fixed uh, pitch prop, I basically say we're flying along at 85 knots and we draw about 21 litres an hour. So at, uh, with the variable pitch prop here, we're down to about 14 litres an hour, probably about 95 knots. 
And that was the one last question I was going to say for uh, adaption. Um, we've talked about adapting to fly landing on the water, yeah. flying and landing on the yes. water. A pusher prop, do you find that a difference pusher prop compared to... You know, yes, this is prop? probably the only hump that you have to overcome when you land, when you, you're flying this configuration of aircraft, the pusher style. Uh, those with a thruster experience will understand that once you pull the power off, the, the tendency for the nose to pitch up has to be overcome. Most tra tractor style aircraft, once the power comes off, the nose pitches over. But there is a few other areas that you have to understand that when you're landing on water you need to keep the nose held off all the time. And obviously when you land on the water you need to gear up every time. Every time. Uh, one of the things that we do say that if you ever have an issue where you have to put it into a paddock we always leave the gear up and the aircraft will just slide to a halt and you won't have to wrap. So if you have to have this aircraft um, in an emergency mode where you need to put it down into a paddock that you don't trust or understand, you leave the gear up and you'll actually just slide to a stop rather than hitting big potholes and stumps and tearing the gear off. So you'll actually, your survivability in this aircraft is a lot more than an aircraft with fixed undercarriage. All right, well, um, thank you very much, Ryan. Really Absolutely. appreciate uh, giving some rundown on the Super Patrol. Thank you very much. Have a good day.